Okay. So, uh, hello everybody. So this is um, HKN, the second workshop, image filtering. And before we go into, um, like officially go into the workshop, I wanna make sure that everybody have this file open up. Like make sure you, uh, make sure you can access to this file. So we already shared this for the review image filter workshop. You should be able to download it in your drive and then go into the folder, open this Python file with Google Colab. You can see it here. And you should be fine. And you go to this page. And um, last time you may need to change this folder path, but this time it should be good. Like everything should be good. Everything should be all set. You can just run it yourself and close this. Um, okay, so those are the reference you can go into um, uh, to, you know, sounds like as uh, extra resource you can go into. And um, so first of all, we need, you, you need a link with your Google Drive. If this, I'm probably gonna just go through this. Um, Python file and explain something um, maybe important in the long way. And then you paste it here. Okay. So now you already mounted your Google Drive to this Python file and then you run the, uh, the library. So those are free libraries here. So I, I know some of you already have some Python experience and uh, Michelle, have you ever used Python? But if you have any questions, you can just send a message to the chat or just speak up. So let me know. And so here's the free libraries we're gonna use in this workshop. CV2 basically is a image processing library. And those are two, you can think of them as two useful too. And here I'm gonna show you some useful Python command, use some building function that you can use to uh, process your, your image. So first of all, the basic one is like load an image. So you, you have load image and display image by this way. So you, you do cv2.read and image.show and stuff like that. If you run it, it looks like this. Here you might be here. Okay, some someone we actually got a confusion on this too, because uh, I think we also mentioned that in the last workshop, in the previous workshop, because cv2.read, it basically just read an image with, uh, with the order of bgr. So if you display the image direct directly, it just like, it is gonna uh, reverse the, the blue layer and red layer. If you wanna display it correctly, you need to switch this two layer by doing so, like cb2.color bgr to RGB so that you can show the correct image. And uh, the way to see that, let me show the original image. So here's the original image like this. So that's why you can use this one to display the, sec the, the second image, which is what you want. And here's the command for save the image. Like when you do some process to the image and then you can just save it to the, to the drive in this case. And yes, so here's some command you can uh, see the image property. So here you use the, you, so print function, you basically just print out what is inside the parenthesis, sounds like, yeah. and string dot image, uh, image dot size, it displays the size of the image and the shape of image in this case. You can see that it displays what, uh, the number of pixels and also the dimension of the image. 
And here is another useful command, which is like resize the image. So in the previous image, you can see the size is like 7, 706 and 1200. 706 by 1200 is like high by the width. And then you can resize it. In this case, I resize it to six, uh, 64 by 64 by using a CV, CV2 dot resize image and with the size that you want it to. And then it's gonna be look like this. You can see that it's scale the image into 60 by 6, uh, 64 by 64 rather than crop an image 64 by 64. And the next one, I'm gonna, actually going to show you how to crop the image. So it's pretty similar. A, you also use the uh, image dot resize. Here, uh, here, here is just one way to do it. I'm pretty sure that there's, uh, hold on. Is dot, I believe. <laughs> Is it like this? Uh, here is, okay. I might need to figure out this one maybe later. Actually, I got, actually I'm gonna do it now. Here, okay, see what I did here? Here, what I do is I- oh, Image uh, underscore resize. I think so, yeah, let me do that. Hmm. Underscore instead of dot resize, it's underscore resize. Uh, I think it's CV2. Oh, hold on. Actually, here is the image resize. I actually want to do this. Oh, okay, here, the intention here is I want to, so we want to crop an image. We want to crop this image into a size of, uh, it's not size of, but you want to create it from 15 to 25 in the hype and also the width is 15 to 25. So like technically it's not using any uh, function here yet. So let's see if this work. Uh, like this. Uh, okay, I know it why, cause I haven't run this block yet. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, the, the issue is I kind of I skip this this block and and when I run this one, he was saying, you can see the arrow here, then image resize is not divided yet because I haven't run this block yet. So you you haven't had this, uh, th these items yet. So after you run this, now you store the, uh, the, the, the resize image 60, four by 64 into these variables. Now you can run this and yay. Okay, now, hey, here we go. So let's, as what I said, it's not any kind of right resize function. It was basically just taking a piece of image out of this image. And now you have the image 10 by 10 and the, uh, and the number of pixels is 300. And um, so here's the way to crop the image. And actually, I really want to talk about the number of pixels. Like, I think we also mentioned in the previous workshop, like, it, you, you keep thinking of one pixel is like, uh, like a, a space. Think of like that. And then you have 10 by 10, which give you 10 multiplied by 10 is 100. And then you have three layers because it's a color image. And so you need to do 10 by 10 by 10, uh, 10, by, 10 by three, which give you 300 pixels for three, uh, three layers. And you also can do it in a grayscale. Like here's the function you can convert the color image into, into, into a, uh, black and white image. So you have you, you also need to use CV2 library and convert this image crop, which is this the this image, 
and then into VGR to gray, and then you get a gray image like this. If you run it, and you can see it now it's 10 by 10. It get rid of three layers, and then you now only have one layer. And also you can see here number of pixels is 100. And the way to see what value, um, uh, let me think of the better way to put it here. So for grayscale image, you can see that for each pixel, it has its value, its own value. And then when you output what value on the image is, you can see something like this, pretty kind of nasty because it really doesn't give you any meaning with this image. But basically you have, but, but those images it represent a range from zero to 250. 255, I believe. And if the image, I mean, if the value on the pixel is high, it means it's closer to black. If it's, if it, if the value is zero, it, then it's totally white. Yes. I thought if it's yeah, just, like 300 or 256 or something. Yes, I see. Or 252. That right now. I think it's opposite. Because when, when I'm looking at the, this uh, value and represent, they should represent this area. Yeah. And their value is kind of high. So I think it's opposite. When you get close to 255 and it's white, when it's zero and it's black. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> And yeah, so those are the array to represent one image. You can think of like, now it's just like 10 by 10, and then it comes to like 1,000 by 1,000, and the, the, the value set is going to be large. And the command you can access to the specific pixel that you wanted to. So in this case, we extract the value from 0 by 0. Uh, the, the value of one specific pixel at the position zero, zero, which is this one, you can see it match. Just a useful command, sometimes could be useful. <laughs> and as well, we said a color image, there are three layers and you can split, uh, split the layers by using a command cb 2 split and they give you B, G, and R. And the image actually looks kind of weird if you display it this way. Um, the other way you do it is you first make a copy of the image and then you set, let's say you, you wanna you wanna display a, a, a blue layer. Yeah. So here, if you want to display the blue, la blue layer, you want you you could set the green layer and red layer to zero by doing this. We already said that the the first value represent the layer. So now you you set the the layer green and red to zero because the first layer should be uh should be the uh, layer zero. In this way, you display the blue, I think I do it the other way. Yeah, it should be blue layer, green layer, and red layer like this. Uh, I think here's some issues here though, because you can, apparently this is a red layer, green layer, and blue layer. It's, it, it all comes back to CV2 library, how CV2 library store the image. So it it kind of so it, it assumed that the first layer is blue, that is the layer zero to blue. But maybe but but actually there's the other way. So blue and red is is uh it is the other way. So the blue the blue layer is actually the third layer and the and the red layer is the first layer. So it's R G B, R G B. 
yeah, it's just some useful command you can refer to. And okay, so those are just those are some uh, building function that you can use to access to image. But now if you have, so now we when we think of like image filtering, like what we usually refer to. So think of this situation, like when I give you this image and what you could do to this image so that it can, so that the image could, uh, you know, to be, uh, to get rid of those like noise there. Because you can see, you can, if you zoom in, uh, you could tell that you can still see what the object is, but you really don't want to have those noise there. Because it, it, it kind of like, you know, just not a good image, like as what we said. So thinking of like uh, having this goal of like filtered its image to make it better, we could first look at how, like, typically how people would deal with image processing. So I want to show you. I have a question. something like this. Okay, for sure. Yeah, above. Above. The, okay. Yeah. We're in this little, link. Yeah, for this one. Yeah. How come mm -hmm. um for the red, uh, the red for the red, it's mm -hmm. um labeled blue instead of red. Yeah. So here you use um here you you label it as a value. B, but you can see, okay. Uh, so first of all, the first value on the array represent the layer, right? Uh -huh. So what he did here is you set the second layer and the first layer to zero. And the only layer left is, uh, is like this zero so here's three layers a layer zero is layer one and layer two so you set these two to zero it means that the only thing left is this yeah but right? does the b mean blue yeah the b means blue then how come it's like the red photo uh here's the thing here's what we said because um, is the other way around. So it's supposed to be RGB. So the first layer represent red layer, the second layer represent green layer, and the third layer is blue layer. And those them, uh, it was just the other way around. You can just set it red. Okay. Yeah, it just uh, naming things. Okay. And 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 also it's a tiny mixed day here. So we were, we were thinking of the first layer as blue layer, but actually the first layer is red layer. You is that yeah. the question? Yeah, answers my question, but like so should it have been labeled R for the first one? Yes, you are right. You should label it R. And the third one should label it blue. Yeah, I think I think you you get the idea because the the first the first layer actually is red layer. I can, as you can see here. And the mistake we make it here is we thought the first layer is blue layer, so that's why we 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 set the name blue. Is that good? Yep. No, I totally get it now. All right. So okay. sometimes it's labeling, and then sometimes you just get mixed up because you have to think backwards in a way. Uh, yeah, kind of. And if you go back to this one, uh, here it is. So when you do cv 2read it read in the image RGB. So the first layer is blue layer, second layer is green, and the third layer is red layer. But usually we have layer GB, uh, uh, RGB. <laughs> So RGB is the case, it is this case. 
is R, G, and B. First layer is red, second layer is green, and the third layer is blue. But when you do CV, CV2 dot read, and then you have GBR. And in this case, we thought it's still GBR. So we that's why we name it blue, green, and red. But actually it's RGB. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, move on. So uh, actually I wanna show you how you usually like process an image showing you something like this. I actually don't wanna play this video. Uh, let me just show you some click rather than showing it, showing the entire thing. So usually you have um, uh, uh, a kernel, like we say kernel, you can think of a max. Like you, you're gonna slide this, this piece of mass and to the right as you as you're doing so in this case you edit up all the number and put and put the uh the 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 final number in the middle so he already done the first one the first one which is this like you have already done this like at this nine number up you get zero so you put a zero there put a zero there and then you move one block to the next to the right and you can you do it and do, 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 do. okay here you go so you add it up you get 10 is actually okay i actually make it wrong make a wrong assumption previously so it seems like you add up all the nine number and divide it by nine and the kernel is one knife i believe it's one knife one knife one knife one knife one knife one knife and all one knife so you add up all the number and divide it by nine, and you keep doing that until you get something like this. And here's the output of using this kernel on the image, and then you are, and then we are done. You get the processed image like this. Uh, it might not be obvious to you. And I could show you something like this. I should have a giant app for that. You can see it, something like this. And as well, we said there's a kernel. Here you use a free by free kernel. And each kernel is one. Uh, so the first first column is one, one, one. Second column is zero, zero. And negative one, negative one, negative one. And in this image, you can see that we first align the kernel on the left up corner and then slide uh, slide to the right. And then uh, when you reach to the end, you go to the second row and you keep doing that. And then you get the output image like this. And as what we said, each pixel gonna represent the brightness of the uh, of, of black and white in the grayscale. In this way, you change the value on each pixel. You can see that if you match that, you can see the first pixel from change from five to negative five. Second pixel change from A to negative four. And you keep doing that, you basically change all the value on the image. And if you want to see the visual represent representation here is another website you can refer to i also put it uh under the reference so here is the um, here you can see it is kind of tiny but it's all the value representing the, uh the 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 brightness of the image and and here's the on the right hand side, here's the image, and the left hand side is the uh, the the represent, represent the pixel value for this image for the image at the right. And here you can see here's a three by three kernel, like you can think of a max. And and if you use the identity one, you pretty much get you know nothing is changing. You can Let's change to blur. 
And if you use something like this, you blur the image and do it using the same technique as what I show you previously, like this one. You using the same technique, uh, this, but this time you using a different kernel from, from the one I show you here. And here's the, uh, so here's the effect you can see after using the kernel like this. I apply on this image and then you get something at the, at the right hand side. And then based on the value of the kernel, you can get different effect. You can see it by changing the value. Let's say this time the value is gonna be something like this. And using the same input image. So every time you have the same input image and then but you get a different output based on the, uh, the kernel you use. Is that clear at this point? Yes. Mm -hmm. You could go over it again, but um. Uh, do you want to go over this again, or uh, or maybe like how you use this like in general? Sure. Uh, okay. So. Uh. Let's go over this again. So here I get, let's say I give you a six by six image. And as we said before, each, uh, each pixel is gonna represent the bindings of the image in a grayscale. You get image like this. And then I, I, you can think of this and other, not an image, but something like a, a, a max. So you put the max, align the first, uh, first three by three block, and then you get a value like this. It's negative five because you multiply, you multiply three by one, and then one by one, two by one, and then all the all of them multiply zero is zero, and then you multiply this three number with negative one, and then you add up all the value and then put the, the final value at the center. Is that clear at this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this one is keep moving. I could not pause it. Yeah, and then if you understand how you come up with the first value, and then you you can uh, like move the kernel to the right by one, and then you now you align this, right? You align this three by three with this block, and then you're gonna come. Oh, I see. I see. It's multiplying uh -huh. these with the center three by yes. to get Yeah, them. I think I should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically you multiply all the value with like, you, you multiply, when you align them, you multiply the value on on both uh, block. So now this time is, in this case, zero by one and five by one and seven by one. And then those three number multiply by zero, so they just give you zero. And then those three values multiply by negative one, so you get negative two, negative nine, and negative five. And then you add up all the value inside this block, and then put the final value at the center, and then it gives you negative four. Yeah, I I totally understand. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then you keep doing that by moving to the right by one block, and then you put a value uh, there, and then you just do it another time. And when you're done with one row, and then you move to the second row, like this. And then keep doing that until the end of the, uh, the end of the, the, uh, the, the matrix. Why say matrix? Yes. Um, so, that's the technique you can use to process the image. And based on, and also as we said, you 
the same input image could, could output different image based on what kernel you are using. So sharpen uh, and also blurred, things like that. It all, it all follow the concept we were, uh, we were talking. We, we were talking previously, like add up all the, like modify all the number within, uh, within this block and then add them up all together and then put the final value at the center. If you can understand that, we can go back to this. I make sure I run this one. And here are some, uh, some typical kernel that people will use like some typical so the first kernel is kind of typical is gaussian kernel which is put it this way if you think of gaussian is like the the, the center has a higher value and then it, it decreases gradually to uh, away from the center so you can see it is decreasing, but this one is uh, is further from the center than this. So it's had it, so it has a lower value than this one. And you also have mean kernel is kind of similar to Gaussian, but is but but it's more like uniformly decrease. Yeah. So this one. Yeah, so this value is, is the same as the others. Diamond, it's like a square. How the Gaussian mm. a diamond. Expands. Gaussian diamond? Yeah, the Gaussian expands in a diamond shape or decreases in a diamond shape and the mean kind of decreases in a square shape. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, might have been, <laughs> but I think that's uh, correct. Yeah, and the the last one is sharpen kernel. There is also a sharpen kernel here. You can see it basically will. So sh the use of sharpen kernel it usually give you a the the like. Um. Uh. I'll say so compare this to image, you can see that the left one is kind of blur, but the right one, it's not a good image as what we said, but you can see the details on the image, like better than the left one. So sharpen is really good for uh, showing the, the, the details on the image, like the shape of like the shape of the objects inside the image like that. And here's just some, uh, so this block you load, you're loading the image. The, here's the image we showed previously, the Apple image. And here you can uh, briefly take a look at how every uh, kernel apply on, on, the, on one image. So when you apply a Gaussian, uh, image uh, calcium kernel to an image, it blur it, and also the mean kernel is kind of having a same effect as what we said. It also it kind of similar to each other, having a highest value at the center and lower value at the side. So it looks kind of similar. So this two and sharpen kernel, you can see it. Uh, it kind of like give you. Uh, more detail on what it is inside the image, uh, especially when you see the floor. It's kind of blur here, but you can see much more details when using sharpened kernel. And if you work with grayscale, now we're loading a grayscale image. And this time we're using a, now this time we're using the building function called Gaussian blurb. You can find uh, more information here. Da, 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 da. I'm not gonna show you like all of them in this workshop, just pick some of them. 
but you can always refer to this image and, uh, and they always have some uh, explanation on how to use those commands. And in, in this case, we use cv2.gaussian blurt. And this first is the input image, which is the image we loaded previously. And three by three is the kernel, the size of the kernel. And in this case, we use three by three, and which is what we have here. So three by three. And if you run it, it, it um, you barely can tell what is change in, in this image compared to the previous one. But if you increase the size of the, the, the kernel, this time, uh, this case, you increase it into 21 by 21. And the change is kind of obvious to you now. You, you blur the image compared to the previous one. And the same as medium filter, here's the three by three. So for medium, it kind of assumes that you're use, uh, you using the square matrix. So when you put a three here, it automatically think it as a three by three. So three by three kernel really doesn't change that much. If you increase to 20 by 21 by 21, and you can see uh, effect like this. As what we said previously, uh, Gaussian kernel and mean and mean kernel, they kind of like similar to each other, but actually there is some different. So you can see it here. So Gaussian filter is move out the image, but for the mean filter, it, it kind of like bloody much more than the Gaussian. And it also have another difference, which I will mention that later, which, uh, yeah. And here's some, uh, here come back to what we said at the beginning of these blocks, it, these sections, like if I give you an image like this, how you can filter the image or let's say how, how you can do some modification on image by having a better, by output a better image by using the kernel. Like to, because as, as what we just said, like there are three uh, kernels that typical, typical kernels that you can use, like how you can know which kernels you should use, or maybe what is the, uh, the, the kernel that will do a better job on, on a noisy signal, uh, on a noisy image like this. So here comes the difference between medium kernel and Gaussian kernel. So medium kernel is, it medium kernel is very helpful when you wanna take off the outsider. We say the outsider is like, uh, in this case, those like black and white dot is something we don't want it. And also it doesn't seem to belong to the image itself. So you wanna get rid of them from the image. And here's the, here's the medium filter I use. Here's one by one, three by three and seven by seven. You can see the, the, the effect, the output image like this. So one by one basically change nothing. And three by three, you can start to see that the dot is kind of getting rid of it. Not, totally, but you still have some effect on that. And when it comes to seven by seven, the uh, the black and white dot is almost totally get rid of, but the trade-off is the image kind of blur a little bit. And if you if we apply Gaussian kernel on the same image, and in this case, I, was, I also use one by one, three by three and seven by seven the same size as the, as the medium filter. And you can see that, so one by one, basically change nothing. And three by three, you can see 
is not having any change to the black and white dot. When it comes to seven by seven, the black and the black and white dot, they are still there. So you, you, uh, so I mean, so Gaussian filter doesn't do a good job to get rid of dot and also it blur the image in this ways. So, so a conclusion on the difference between Gaussian filter and uh, and also the medium filter is Gaussian filter is so Gaussian filter is good to smooth out like let's say smooth out the image when you have a, a sharp edge or stuff like that you can smooth out it using you can smooth those edge out using a Gaussian filter but medium filter it will be good to use for getting rid of those like annoying dot like get, get rid of things that shouldn't exist in the image, but in some degree. Yeah, so in this case, the Gaussian uh, filter will work better for the image. And we call those noise as salt and pepper noise, because it is like red and white. <clears throat> and you can also try sharpen the image like sharpen the original image, it give you more details on like showing the the shape of the image like sharply, but also not do a good job to get rid of those dot. Instead, it also sharpened the dot and the the white and black dot. So now you you know the image looks worse. Actually, not worse. It depends on what you what you want to do with the image. And do you have any? Questions at this point before I move on. No, everything seems clear. Mm -hmm. And that actually concludes all the uh, image filtering technique. Like first of all, we were set, uh, we were discussing uh, showing you that how an image is processed in general, like. Uh, if you go back to the very beginning, we are talking about you usually having you usually have a kernel. It it doesn't limit to to three by three. As what we said, you can always increase the size of the kernel into let's say five by five or seven by seven. And and the value of the kernel is set by human. So you can set whatever number you wanted to as long as that's the effect you want to get out of the image. And those are three technique, uh, typical kernels that people could use. We name it. So here's the thing. So we name the kernels, name it mean, mean blur kernel and also Gaussian kernel is because they are kind of too common for people to use. So that's why we name it. But you can always, let's say you can change this to zero. And that's all. That's okay too, right? Like what we said, it always depends on what value you can, uh, what effect you wanna have on the image. It doesn't have to be this way. You can always say, I wanna set the, uh, only keep the zero point two five and set everything to zero. That's okay too, as long as that's the effect you wanna get out of the image. So typically, you have you use the you use a kernel and then follow the technique like this. You align the, Im the image with the kernel and then multiply the number on both block and then add them up, put the final value at the center of the, uh, of the kernel and then you get the uh, desired uh, upper image. And that's the general technique. And if you look at the and here we show you uh, what effect you can get by applying different kernel uh, to the same image. Uh, so Gaussian kernel, mean kernel, and sharpen kernel. And they all, and also they have an effect on grayscale as well. And here, uh, so lastly, we specific mention salt and pepper noise. 
so so in paper noise is like you have a black and white dot on the image that shouldn't belong to the image itself. That's why medium filter is will be do a good job on getting rid getting rid of those annoying stuff. And Gaussian, and here's the Gaussian work on the black and paper noise, which doesn't do a great job because Gaussian filter is very good at smoothing out, smoothing out and would then be able to get rid of the dot out of the image. And yes, so those are- Oh, in the those, bottom image, bottom, mm -hmm. like in the neck section, all the way down. Over the way down? Yeah, it's supposed to, yeah, down more. Downward? Yeah, it's supposed to say forever blur dot V uh, right below it. It says noise four. It should say for uh, dot png. Uh, you mean this? No, the one below it, because it's not the one below. Photo. Oh, yeah, it's the uh path is incorrect. It's a png. Oh, okay. So you said it's png. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. And actually, the rest of the uh, the rest of the this workshop, I would encourage that you guys try this free uh, actual four images out by using by applying the the filter we mentioned previously, like trying out yourself and see if you can uh, filter the image like to get a better image by applying any any. Uh, any filters that you can think of. And yeah, that basically, that basically conclude this workshop and the rest of the time was for you guys to work on those image. If you have any questions, you can always ask us, okay?